So I'm going to be talking about 3JS. Um, don't ask too many questions because I've got no idea what I'm going to do. Um, so I thought I'd start. There we go, it's an absolute basic opener. Um, what we've got here is literally, I'm just set, setting the scene. Um, if I should have the right file open. Um, so loading 3JS, um, Orbit. This isn't required, but you'll see more orbits used as I go in later on. Um, we've got the container, we've got a camera, we've got scene, we've got renderer, and um, here's orbit. All that does is allow you to orbit around objects. Um, and that's it, that's the absolute bare bones. Um, it's not very really exciting, is it? So let's put some objects in. There we go. Um, these are some of the basic objects that you can import that are already within JS to use and using a few textures. Um, so everything here apart from the two pictures are all within um, 3JS. So we've got uh, wireframes, we've got some textures. You can see as I'm moving around, this is what Orbit does. It allows you to Um, so let's have a quick look at what we've got in here. Um, we've got we've got floor. So this is our grey down here. And you notice I've got plain receive shadow true. If we don't have that, Shadows are turned off. All shadows are pretty much set off by default because they will use a lot of um, processing power. So the more shadows, the more lights, the more things you throw, the more effects, the more it will start to complain. So all shadows are automatically off by default. Um, you can see that there's receiving shadows and casting shadows. Um, so our cube here. So our cube is set to cast sh shadows. You can see we've got two light sources. I've left this view on so we can actually see one of the lights here. And there's another one sort of over that way that isn't set to display. Um, so we can see that's set to cast a shadow. This is, this isn't. These are, this is. Um, and we can adjust the size of things. In, here, so we're using X, Y, and Z. <laughs> um, but you get the idea, so you can actually adjust the size of things, the basic geometry that's included. Um, there's a bunch of materials that you can adjust the colours for, positions, so you've got to get into your head about not just left, right, but also how far back. From the sensor it is. Um, so we've got here circle one, circle two, imaginatively titles, and that's these two here. Now if I spin around the back, one vanishes. Ooh, um, I'm trying to sound excited by this. Um, that's because um, unless we actually tell the material to be double-sided, it only displays the front side. This is a fairly common thing with um, some 3D programs as well as things like Lightwave, modeling away, and you spin your object around and chunks of it disappear. Um, they're still there, it's just the normals are pointing away from the way, from the way you're looking. Um, and down to our sphere. So I've got wireframe set to true. So that is set. If I turn, if I remove that, then it becomes a solid sphere. But I've got basic material on there, so that it won't actually have any shading. And there we go. It's flat. You know, there's no light, there's no uh, reflection, there's no highlights, anything on there. So it's pretty basic. Um, and cylinder, we can adjust our radius. Top radius, bottom radius, each of these um, points here, and change the heights. So we've got some, some um, 
controls over there. And again, I've set it to double-sided because if I didn't, you wouldn't be able to see the inside of the face here. Uh, and Taurus is that one. And we've got two um, knots, which are these two. And you know, this one has, you can actually see the polygon faces on it um, because the, there's this um, material is set. Um, you can have smoothing or um, well, not smoothing. Um, and if I had it set to smoothing, you'd be able to see it smooth. Kind of obvious what it says. Um, so down to lighting, we've got ambient light, which is the whole of the scene being lit. If I took that out, dropped it down, you have a nice moody background. Um, we've got spotlights, which is that little chap there. So that's kind of like a desk light where it's pointing down the direction. Um, point light, I've not included. Point light is if you imagine something like the sun where it's shining off in every single direction from a single point, um, it's, uh, it's kind of processor heavy. Um, and if you turn shadows on and back, it's going to stop throwing everything out in every direction. And again, it gets a bit grumpy. Um, uh, so we come down to renderer, we set a background colour, make sure that we've got um, shadows enabled. Now what I've got here, there's actually two, two or three different ways of importing textures. Um, one way we've got here where we load the texture and we give it the path. Another one where we, we've already, we set the path down here so we dump everything into one place um, and then load the image file in. Um, and then everything renders up. Basic objects, what can we do with them? Wow, I can make them bounce. Um, so, any of our objects that we've got um, start to give it X, Y, and Z position. Um, don't have to give it any of those, you can give it one, it'll only move in one direction, like a mountain pogo stick or something. Um, you could put all kinds of maths in there just to make it do something. Um, if you can find a use for it, then great! Um, okay, so, so we're starting to get a bit more in depth. This is where the ice strain comes in. Look at that! <laughs> this is one of the renders. <laughs> this is built into. Um, Pre-JS, um, this is the ASCII render, uh, I'm sure it has a use, beyond somebody going, yeah, this would be a great idea, put it in. Um, is it drawing the text onto the canvas, or is it actually just outputting text straight? Um, I think it's drawing it onto the canvas, um, I won't attempt to answer that question when Okay. I've got no idea, but... If you just inspect it and see if it's a canvas element. If you get bored, you can also do this with VLC and play video like this.
some cool new Oculus Rift effect. If anybody wants to buy me an Oculus Rift so I can test whether this actually does work that way, that would be science. Um, we can load video. You probably can't hear, but it's actually buzzing as well. So it actually loads the audio as well. Um, so you could create like a little cinema screen and walk around in it and stick a film on and then put your Oculus Rift effect on and pretend you're actually in the cinema rather than actually going out to the cinema. Um, and so our video, all we do is um, we'll just bring the um, video file in and I can set it to loop. Um, there's a few other a little bit of space you can do with it, but yeah, basically. Right, so now we come on to the bit that this is where I, I got all interested. <laughs> People remember this from last year? <laughs> <laughs> Dig it out every year. Um, so a 3D object that I created in Cinema 4D, while the basic objects that are included with 3GS are grey, you've got cubes, spheres, um, and you can merge them together. There's actually functions where you can intersect, cut chunks out. Um, you, if you want to, you can actually work out all the points, build an object from scratch, so you could do something like this if you were incredibly patient, or you could just build it in a 3D program, texture it and run it out. Um, so what we do is we actually use a three objects, and the MTL is the material. Um, so we use this loader, brings our objects and our companion texture in, and the MTL file This loads in my textures um, and I can adjust some of the other settings within here. This is um, this can then be, I can edit this um, and change some of the details in there without having to go back into the 3D program and re-edit it. First thing I brought in, I'm so excited. Um, I was so excited that I brought him again, went round to Andy's house and he, he helped me do this, ready. He's so excited. Oh, you can fade it. <laughs> um, so you can take the objects and anything that you do with things normally through a bit of um, JavaScript, you can edit the object. Um, I can't demo that because it ended up in being all efficient creating it as a separate JS file. Mm -hmm. All the files <laughs> will be available later if anybody wants to look at them. Um, um, and I was playing about with importing some other things from my 3D collection. And this is a really old model I made. And let's see how well you can see. There's actually holes in the geometry, and it's because when I was making it, it's sort of see through in places. And um, when I was making it, I was kind of sloppy, and the mesh, um, I was using um, engons, which are basically um, polygon with more than four sides so you can see there's one here and all that happens is it, it gets it gets a bit no I don't like that and when you've got 3D 
um, games engines or have you. Things are usually poly or tries, um, which point they render fine. Otherwise, they go all a bit wobbly. Um, and what I ended up having to do then was go back, edit it, take out all the engons, and thought, hey, we've got a spaceship, and it's flying to you. So I'm going to sound effects on this one, so you have to go. <laughs> so, um, so bringing it all together, I thought we're going to add one last thing for the big finish. <laughs> so you can, there we go, here's the proper vomit inducing part. <laughs> here's, here's vomiting. Um, skeletal vomiting and rainbow. <laughs> you know, you've got a classic icon. So um, what I've got here is a 3D object with textures. We've got a nice particle system going on. Um, and the particles is a separate JS um, called Sparks. And we can do all kinds of things with it. We can adjust the colours. Um, we can change the direction they're going. Um, yeah, there's lots of some nice things in here. Let's change the gravity. I call it gravity, well, really, it's not gravity, it's just kind of the direction it's going. Wait, so it's going to be, can be thrown up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's, there's lots of things. What I've done is, as I said, all the files I put online, um, they're all sort of fairly marked up. But I have to admit, an awful lot of what I've looked at and done with this um, has been me horrendously plagiarising this collection of stuff. Obviously I created some of the 3D content, um, but there's a whole load of wonderful examples um, created by the guy who created 3JS, Mr. Doom. Um, and there's some absolutely mind-blowing stuff that's just great fun to sort of go, wow! Um, probably works better when you're not handing half the screen. Um, yeah, so this, I'd recommend having a look at, at the library if you're interested. Um, there is also um, a basic editor allows you to import stuff. I didn't actually use I didn't find out about this until I was like three quarters of the way through it. I um, had a little play with it and went, yeah, right, I can do most of this stuff now. Um, but you can create, add lights, a few bits and pieces in there, um, and have a little play. So that's it, really. So I wouldn't say any questions, but I probably can't answer them. <laughs> Um, are there any questions? Yeah. Have you played around with sort of performance and benchmarking? Yeah, there is a. Um, in a lot of the examples, there's a um, stats that allows you to track the FPS. Yeah. Most of the time, with the decent machine, you can get 60 frames per second quite easily. Um, old Skeletor with his particles going. Um, <clears throat> it's a. I think he's about four meg in size. Yeah, he's about four and a half meg. So if you do have a look at it online, it might grind a little bit as that's loading. But I was throwing quite a few particles at it, and in the um, Buck Rogers ship with the two particles coming out of the back, goes at a fairly good clip. Mm -hmm. um, when you start to throw more and more stuff in, obviously it will start to grow, um, and at which point it's a case of just balancing how many silly effects you're throwing at it to what you're actually trying to do with it. Um, I can see some advantage with this with um, like product design where you can create stuff and allow people to rotate it. And there's things like the um, QuickTime VR object that was quite popular yeah. about six, seven years ago. Um, 
kind of died off a bit, but this could quite easily be used. Product examples, people are actually young and look at 3D objects um, before going into production or whatever. Yes? Because um, you did your talk on Unity previously, how do you, which do you prefer out of Unity and 3? Because they're, they're a little bit different, they're kind of in the same space. Yeah, um, Unity I find easier to use because it's it's got GUI and I'm useless as soon as it comes to actually doing stuff like that. Um, but stick GUI in, drag drop stuff in, it's great. Plus you have more of an interactive, or I find it's a bit easier to make interactive stuff with. Um, this is great for, um, for, for me, for importing stuff, putting it within the browser, at least with, you, with this you don't have to have a plugin. Although Unity is currently going that way, that you don't need a plugin. Um, so the latest version of Firefox, Unity Five, I think, is going to be totally without a plugin. Although I could be wrong on that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like both of them. It's just what you're going to use them for is kind of the thing. I can see this as more of a gimmicky little bit at the moment. Probably just because I haven't found it properly useful yet. Yes. Uh, what are you going to make next? Um, I don't know. How can I top skeleton or throw it up a rainbow? <laughs> it can't be beaten. Um, I I don't know. Uh, I've got some ideas of what I could be um, playing about with. Um, time to do but I do want to this is kind of one of the first JavaScript things where I really got into it, really enjoyed it because I can relate to it. Um, I like the 3D stuff, I've been doing it for years.